In this video, I'm going to be taking a series of landscape photographs over a number of different seasons to show how this beautiful part of Dartmoor National Park transforms itself as the seasons change. I'm then going to print those photographs off and put them in a special frame. Welcome to Holmbridge on Dartmoor. Undertaking a photography project should be in the development of any landscape photographer, myself included. Now, the idea for this particular project wasn't immediate. It actually came as a result of visiting this location over the space of many years. Normally, my favorite time to come and visit here would be at autumn. Lots of woodland around here, and as you can imagine, the autumn colors can really become vibrant around here. It's one of my favorite places to shoot autumnal colors. But more recently, I've been coming here in the non-autumn seasons like winter and summer. And what I've found is I can still create compelling pictures without that necessarily that vibrant autumn color. Then I thought to myself, what if I could somehow combine all those seasons together and make a cohesive bit of work? Perhaps I could shoot the same location over a number of seasons to show how it transforms from one season to the next, and then take those images print them off and put them into a single frame, giving me that body of work that shows home bridge as it changes over the seasons. Well, that's the idea. And like any good photography project, you don't quite know whether it's gonna work out or not when you first start off. But unless you make a start, you'll never know. So that's what I'm here to do, is to make a start. Welcome to the viewpoint that's gonna form the basis of all the photographs I'm gonna take in this seasonal series of images. It's one of my favorite spots to shoot along this particular stretch of river. I've photographed it many times before, so I'm confident it's gonna form a good base for this particular project. Let me talk you through some of the elements of this composition that I think will make it a worthwhile shot to take. Obviously, we have the river. Now, water level is gonna be critically important in this project for a number of reasons. First of all, too much water coming down the river, and that will just be a whitewash. It'll just, there'll, be no, there'll be no inky blackness, there'll be no contrast between the river and the white water and the streets. It'll just be a big white mess. We, we don't want too much water. The other reason I don't want too much water is I've got these rocks here in the foreground. They're gonna form the basis or the key element in my foreground. Again, too much water, and the water will be going over the top of them and you won't be able to see them. What I'm looking for is just enough water to go around the sides, to create that split, and that'll really add some, uh, make that foreground a bit more dynamic. The other elements, of course, I've got the woodland and the bank here. Now that is where I will see the most dramatic change over the seasons. That's where I think, you know, when you're gonna be looking at the photographs, you're gonna go, ah, that was photographed in that season. These are gonna be the, the telltale signs of when that picture was taken. And then further down the river, I've got the bridge there which leads off to the vanishing point to hold the viewer in the frame. I'm pretty confident this is a, a good composition and it's gonna work well over the seasons. The other only thing that I need to really think about, I guess, is do I shoot this in vertical or landscape orientation? Now, I have shot it in, in both formats previously. It's gonna be hard to know that until I've got all the photographs at the end. So, to save myself any heartache, Later on down the line, I'm gonna be capturing both landscape and vertical orientation shots every season that I come here to capture photographs. That way I can look at them, both versions, at the end and make a decision from there. So that's my shot. It's time to take that first photograph, summer. Summer. A season often overlooked by us landscape photographers, especially when it comes to taking pictures of woodlands. But for this project, the summer shot is absolutely critical. This is because as I look about the landscape, I notice it's all green. It's all very fresh, rich, vibrant. You've got greens on the ground, you've got greens on the trees. And that's really gonna help portray that sense of summer, of vibrancy, of freshness. But that's gonna be in real contrast to those later on shots as I take as the seasons progress. So it's gonna be a real cornerstone 
of the series of pictures that I'm going to take. It's not only going to be uh, an important shot in the series, hopefully it's going to be one of the most spectacular shots I'm going to take in the series. And I'm really excited to actually be finally starting this project with my first photograph. What a fantastic feeling to get those first photographs captured in this long-term project. It always feels so good to start a project. You can spend so much time planning it and thinking about it and worrying about how long it's going to take. But when you capture those first photographs, you know you've started the journey and things are moving forward. But that's it for summer. I shall see you in a few months where this scene will look very different in autumn. Welcome back to Holmbridge and this most beautiful season's autumn. Autumn, perhaps the landscape photographer's favorite season. And if you look about me, you can probably see why. Gone are all those lush, vibrant greens of summer, and they've been replaced by all these lovely golden hues, these oranges, yellows, and browns. It's a really colorful scene, and it's quite an exciting one to photograph. But as with autumn photography, timing is absolutely key. I've been coming here for a few weeks, just waiting for the right moment. Too early and the trees are still a little bit green. Or oh, when I was here last week, there'd been too much rain and there was too much water in the river. And then again, if you leave it a little bit too late, what happens is you risk, run the risk that a storm will come through and the wind will strip the trees of all that golden color. So I think I might have worked out with this morning though. I've got just the right amount of water in the river and looking about, as you can see, there's lots of nice golden rich colors for me to capture. So I'm just gonna wait for a little bit more light and then we'll start taking some photographs. I'm not gonna cover off exactly what my composition is because I already talked about that at the beginning of the video. So what I'm gonna try and do for autumn is try and replicate some of those compositions. And I say compositions because I took a series of shots back in summer because I wanted to give myself a few options to know which type of shot I would like, whether it's a vertical or horizontal here or just as a little bit further back. So I'm actually gonna spend the time and replicate those shots. Now when I say replicate, I'm not gonna make them exactly the same in terms of composition, but they're gonna look reasonably similar, I think. I'm gonna try and put the objects in the right, uh, in the same place uh, within the frame. I don't need it to be exactly the same. Uh, it's really about the colors and the changes that this location goes through through the season. So exact replicas are not needed, but to help me at least try and get things looking similar, I've got Lightroom Mobile on my phone here, and I've made sure that all the photographs I took during summer are synced to my online catalog. This means I can look through them here on Lightroom Mobile, and I can kind of look at the shots I had, look at the compositions I had, and try and at least align so they, they look reasonably similar. So that's a handy little tool that I carry in my portfolio about in Lightroom Mobile. Great little application. So I'm just looking down the river here and it just looks fantastic. Autumn, such an exciting time. Lots of leaves all about the ground. Yeah, I think it's time to start capturing some of those beautiful autumnal images. That's my autumnal shots in the bag. Having a look at the back of the LCD screen, they're looking quite good. I'm, I'm pretty optimistic now, and it's good to actually get this project not only going, but actually get some momentum behind it now. Now that I've got summer shots, I've got autumnal shots, I'm building up that catalog of images from which I can select from to create that series of photographs to hang on my wall. It's exciting to, to really get going. I will be back here in winter. This is probably going to be, I don't know, a few months time, probably after the turn of the new year. I want to give the chance for the kind of season to finish and winter to really come in, the, the leaves to be 
stripped from the uh, from the branches to really change the look and feel. It's exciting to kind of move forward with this project. I'm genuinely excited to come back here in winter. So I will see you in winter where well, this scene will look very different. Welcome back to Holmbridge and winter. We're now in the middle of winter and coming down here a few months after I shot the autumn image, the change is quite stark, it's quite dramatic actually. And I have shot here in winter before, but I've forgotten how stark and raw this scene goes. Gone are most of the leaves. I mean, there are the exception here. We've got this tree here behind me, which is still hanging on to its little brown leaves. But for the most part, the whole woodland around this part of the river has opened up and it's all bare. But there's still some colour on the ground. There's still some green in this air. The leaves that fell from autumn, they've gone kind of mushy brown, purpley colour. But there's something unique about this location, about this time of year, that's just going to produce a photograph that's going to be very, very different from the other ones. And it's that contrast between the other seasons that I'm looking to capture here this morning. Well, I do hope you can hear me over the noise of the water. Talking of the water though, it's probably just at the optimal level. Despite winter and there's been a bit of rain, the ground's quite wet. Got to be careful when I'm standing here. I can still get in, the rocks are exposed, but there's still a lot of white water going around and traveling around these rocks, which gives me those really nice kind of white lines. I think I need to nail, particularly for this shot, will be the exposure time. Normally, I don't like to kind of blur the water too much, I like a little bit of texture, because that's what you get here with this white water coming down. So probably about half a second to a second, I'll just have to play about with it. But looking through the viewfinder, there's, a, like I said, a real kind of starkness and rawness about the environment now, but it's still got all those characteristics that I like shooting about Holmbridge. The river, the bank here that's covered in this lovely, vibrant green grass. It's amazing how even in winter, it still maintains quite a lot of that vibrancy. But yeah, all those leaves of the trees have gone. It looks really good. I'm going to take the shot, just tune it up. Yeah, time up. Yeah, I think that looks really good. I have been trying another couple of angles as well. I'm gonna shoot a little bit further back because I'm not quite sure, like I say, at the end of the, the shooting, which images, whether it's vertical, horizontal, whatever. So I'm just gonna shoot a variety of them and then we'll sort it all out uh, once we've post-processed them and we're gonna try and put them in order. Fantastic though. Thank you so much for joining me here at Holmbridge for my winter shot. I shall see you in just a short few moments where the scene will be changed all over again and it will be spring. Welcome back to Holmbridge and spring. The colours are looking superb, but I've got a bit of a problem. So here we are in spring, ready to get this next and final shot for my project. The colours are actually quite surprising to me. I, when I started this project out, I had a kind of original concern that perhaps that the summer shot would look very similar to the spring shot, obviously being rich, vibrant and green. But what I've learned from actually having a, a more detailed look at spring and the colours that come out is it's a slightly different shade of green. I know that doesn't sound much, but it's a more of a limey green rather than that deep, rich green that you get during summer. So, and also the foliage covers a little bit less at the moment as well. So that lime green contrasts well with the dark barks of the tree. And I actually think it looks, it does look a little bit different from summer. So it would be a welcome addition to that set of images that I'm trying to create at the moment. However, however, one major problem, April. It's about mid-April, so about halfway through spring. It's not rained for weeks. Now, it rained last night, all, du all during the day yesterday, as you say, and I kind of hoped if I came out this morning, there might be some more water in the river. But it's way down, way, way, way down, and all the rocks are exposed. I could probably, if I had a pair of walking bowls, I could probably walk across 
the river at certain places. What does this mean for my photography? Well, the problem is, while obviously the tree for always looks different at each point of the year, and spring was going to look a little bit different from summer, so I was quite confident with that, but a lot more of the rocks are exposed. There's none of that water going around, that foreground rock that I like. It's down by at least half. So all these bare rocks are exposed and they don't look very photogenic. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to come back over the next few weeks if it rains. I'm not even sure if it's going to rain. If the water levels get back up, I might be able to rescue it before these colours look, start to look too much like summer colours. Or the other option is I might just ditch spring from the collection. So I might just have a three sets of uh, photographs, which now that I've seen the spring colours would be disappointed. I, I kind of thought at the beginning of the project spring might look too much like summer, so I might have to do that anyway. But now that I've seen the colours and how unique it looks, it would be a bit of a shame to drop that from the project. However, we'll, we'll see what happens. We've got a bit of time yet, but I'm going to take some photographs here today just to have something in the bag. And like I say, I'll just have to keep returning and we'll see what happens. So I've got my camera in position and I'm just looking at the scene and it's really very, very different. It's just not going to work for me, I don't think. The rocks are bare, they look quite ugly. There's no water going around the side of the rocks to create those nice effects of those white water. There's a lot of reflections in the water because the water's not moving. I'm going to take some shots anyway. The colours look really good though. When I've got the polarizer turned up, those lime green colours look superb. It's a real shame. And you know, I thought, I hope last night's rainfall would fix the situation, but clearly it's going to need a significant rainfall over a longer period of time to bring this water level back up. Take the shot, but it just lacks all that character that I looked for in those, uh, that I had in those previous shots, what I, I like about this location. Oh, can be tricky. I'm going to carry on taking the shots, so I've got some reference shots to compare to the ones I took earlier. But I think, yeah, definitely the only way this is going to work is a repeat visit. Challenging conditions for sure. It's a real shame because the colours look great. The foliage covers just about right, but it's just no water. And that shot is going to stick out like a sore thumb compared to the other ones. It's just not going to sit well in terms of its consistency with the water level. So hopefully, I never thought I'd say this, I hope it rains a lot some point over the next couple of weeks and I can just quickly nip back here, grab the shot. But I'm going to see you back home in just a few moments where I may or may not have a spring shot. I never don't. Doesn't matter. I will just plow on anyway and we'll see how things look with just three images. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. In this part of the video, we're going to do a few things. I'm going to discuss the problems I've been having with capturing that spring photograph. I'm also going to have a look at the images that I've captured and how I've put them into small collections for review. I've then got a potential solution for the spring image problem that I want to have a chat about. After that, we're going to down select the images and we're going to have a look at which photographs are going to make it into the final collection and in which order they're going to flow in as well. Once we've got that bit done, I'll have a look at how the frame is going to be designed and ordered. Then we'll print the photographs off, we'll put them in the frame, and then finally, we'll hang it on the wall. Let's talk about the problem with the spring photograph. As you saw in the segment just there, when I was on location for spring, the water levels were way down and I really just was not happy with the photographs. It just, for me, just lacks that consistency between the other three with a sufficient water flow and you've got the flow around the rocks, etc. That's just not there present in that spring photograph. My intention therefore was to keep going back during the months of spring, uh, hopefully after a, a significant rainfall and recapture the photograph. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's bizarre to say, there's barely been any rain. It has rained, but not any significant downpour that would push that water level up. I had a look at some of the historical data for water levels for that river that are available on the internet. And this does seem to be a bit of a odd few months where there's not been perhaps uh, the, the rainfall that you would normally get in spring, because you know even looking back at last year, there was some rainfall on the water levels perhaps twice as high. So this does leave me with a problem. I've got this 
photograph that I captured from Spring, but it doesn't sit necessarily very well with the other ones. But that said, why don't we take a look at the images I have captured over the seasons and see what we can work out. Let's jump onto Lightroom and review the photographs that I've captured. Uh, what I'm not doing in this video is I'm not covering my post-processing technique. Um, I've got a whole uh, playlist of my workflow videos. You'll find a link for that in the video description below. You'll find in there how I use post-processing, mostly all done in Lightroom, and how I manage my photographs and stuff like that. So if you're interested about that, like I say, there's a link in the video description below to that playlist. But what I've done is I've looked at all the photographs I've captured for this project and I've grouped them into four mini collections essentially. So there's two for the vertical orientation shots and there's two for the landscape orientation shots. Why don't we take a look? Okay, here we are in Lightroom. So the first mini collection I've got here is a series of landscape shots. Now I have included the spring shots that I captured in that segment of the video. I still think it's important to see how they sit alongside the others. Now I've chosen these shots. I've kind of grouped these together because uh, where I've placed the bridge and I've also included a little bit of sky. So these are slightly perhaps wider shots than the other collection of landscape uh, orientation shots that I've got. I'm pretty happy here with summer. Autumn looks quite good, as does winter. I think they're painting the picture quite well. And to be fair to spring, it does actually look not too bad. Still not happy with this rocks down here, not having much water over them. I think it's a bit distracting and doesn't necessarily sit well in the consistency of the other three. But I do like those colors. I like those spring colors. So it's maybe not um, as bad as I once thought it was, but um, I I'm still debating about this particular image. And here is the second set of landscape photographs or landscape orientation photographs. Again, we've got spring up here looking, sorry, not spring, this is summer, looking nice here. Really like the, the water patterns coming around the rock here. And the, the main difference between the these sets of images and the previous landscape orientation shots is I've tried to limit the amount of sky appearing in the top of the screen because at uh, the top of the, the frame, as you say, because it was quite distracting, it's quite a bright area, so I wasn't sure whether that'd be too distracting or not, but the colours look good here, and the good coverage of the autumn colours here in the autumn shot. And I do quite like this winter shot here, got nice texture coming around here. Again, with the spring shot, lots of bare, dry, not very photogenic rock, so again, still got, you know, concerns over this image, though again, the colours are, are really nice, it's, it's, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a pain, isn't it? Uh, having one sort of image with something that you're not happy about. Now, here's my first collection of vertical images. Again, similar to that previous set of landscapes, I've tried to not include as much of the sky as possible. Now, while I quite like these shots, I think the vertical orientation doesn't include enough of the stuff that's interesting, which is the color around the trees. So I'm not necessarily convinced that these work better than the landscape shots. Not Certainly not as a, as a series to show how things change. Again, spring shot, a bit, bit lacking in water, but again, the colors are, are really nice, those lime green colors. And finally, the second set of vertical images taken from a slightly different viewpoint. Really like the summer one here. Fantastic water, all these streaks coming through. Uh, and then we've got the uh, autumn one here and then winter as well looks really nice. I've included the same spring image because I didn't actually take that many images as spring. So this is the same one from the previous vertical collection. Going back to the landscape orientation shots, I'm much more drawn to these photographs than I am the vertical shots. I get more of the landscape and not just the, the river. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to bother with the vertical ones. I'm not going to take them any further. And I'm gonna go with one of these sets of landscape orientation shots, or potentially what I'm thinking about now is depending on the season and, and what's on the uh, contained within the picture, I might actually use a mix and match of these ones. Because for example, I quite like in winter here, the way we've got a little bit of uh, haziness almost up here, a little bit of light shining through onto these, these naked branches. Whereas if I look at the winter shot here, I think there's just too much light up there but when it comes to the green shots, having a little bit of light and extra space up at the canopy here, I think works quite well. So if we have a look at all eight landscape photographs here, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and select from these eight here and find out which ones I'm going to pick. 
However, there's one more thing I want to do that I've kind of discovered by accident that might solve the problem of these two spring pitches. The potential fix to my spring photograph problem uh, kind of came out of the blue really. I was actually looking through my collections of photographs, looking at the star ratings for them because I was uh, sorting out some photographs for a competition. And I came across a photograph that I completely forgotten about. And it's this one here, actually taken in spring. And it's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, the water level is a little bit higher <laughs> than the previous three th season shots, but it's a lot more, it's a lot closer to, to my original vision of how I wanted those photographs to all look reasonably consistent. I've got the beautiful lime colors here um, of, of the, the foliage. So for me, it actually works quite well. So I'm gonna chuck this one into the mix. And the fortunate thing for me is that it was actually taken in spring 2021. So even from a time frame point of view, I'm not plucking out a photograph for some random bit in time. It's really because I started this project in summer 2021. So all it's really done is I've started, it's as if, if, I, if I select this picture, it's almost as if I started the project the previous season. So I'll have spring 21, summer 21, winter 21, and I think, sorry, that's not right. It's <laughs> spring 21, summer 21, autumn 21. And then I think the winter shot was actually just taken in, in January there. So I still have a consistent flow of dates. So I'm gonna chuck this into the pool. So now I have nine photographs to do uh, a selection from. And I, I just, like I say, I think I really prefer this one over these bare ones here. And it's actually a nice bit of light. So uh, let's move on to the next stage. Finding that spring photograph has been a real bonus for me actually, because it gives me a lot more confidence that I'm gonna be able to capture all four seasons in this project. What I'm gonna do now is from those, I think it was at nine photographs, I'm gonna select which photographs are gonna make the final collection and I'm gonna try and sort out which order they are gonna flow in. I think it's probably gonna start at, start at spring anyway, but it's good to have a look and see how things flow and how each of the photographs sits with the previous and the next photograph. Now I can do that all digitally within Lightroom, but what I like to do is I like to do that using prints. Now I'm just gonna print off some really small photographs, 10 by 15 centimeters on just some uh, Canon glossy photo paper. Uh, for this project and for all the prints I'm making, I am using the Canon Image Prograph Pro 300 printer. If you're interested to know a bit more about that printer, I've done quite a long video on that. Uh, so you'll find a link for that in the video description below, along with my printing playlist as well. So if you're interested in more printing content, do check that out. Um, and also I won't be using Canon's glossy paper for the final output. This is just to allow me to do sort of reasonably inexpensive prints for having a look at how things flow. I will be using some photo speed paper later on as well, but I'll talk more about that uh, when we get to the printing stage. Okay, here we've got my nine photographs. Got the down select this to four. I find this is a really good way of visualizing lots of different pictures that look quite similar. Just a makes it a bit more tactile, one of the great things about printing. Like I say, you could do this in Lightroom, but for me, this is a much more engaging and flexible way to look at my photographs. So I am pretty well compelled about this spring photograph, the one that I identified to select it for the final uh, down select. I know these pictures have grown on me, but given that I've got this one with a bit more water, and it kind of marries up a bit more with perhaps the summer picture, I am gonna going to discount the two spring shots that I've got there. So we'll start with that spring shot. Now, I did say I'll probably mix and match from the collection based on a few things. So if I immediately just have a look at the two winter shots here, for example. Because there's no foliage up here on the top of the, the canopy, that this bright area, well, it was quite bright and quite distracting, which I quite like the mood of this one a little bit better. I quite like the rock here and the way the water's flowing out. So I'm gonna probably take away that one and that's gonna leave me with that winter shot. If we have a look at the two autumn shots here, again, this is a bit more tricky. However, again, potentially the same issue or the same feeling I have about the winter shot here compared to the autumn shot. Again, I quite like the water flowing around this rock here. There's a bit more color perhaps here in the, in the foreground. I do lose a bit of what's here. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this one. So remove that there, 
put that there. Right, so let's just really leave, excuse me, the two summer shots, which ones to pick. I like them both. Again, perhaps this one. Again, I like the water flowing around here. Uh, I've got a bit of sky up in this one. I'm quite tempted to go with this one. It does, however, slightly mean that this photograph doesn't maybe have the same uh, position of the bridge. Do I bring another one back in? Do I maybe do this summer one? I think this is going to require a little bit more thought. I'm not going to try and bore you in this video as I go about, but I think, I think potentially my gut feeling is I do spring, summer, uh, what we got, winter, autumn. Get the seasons right, Julian, like that. I think would be my preferred collection. However, this one I'm still potentially tempted by, so it could be either that one or that one. I am going to spend a bit more time thinking about which photographs would be in that collection. I do have a bit of a, a decision to make about which one of those two summer shots I'm going to pick. I'm pretty happy with spring, winter and autumn. Just the summer one's going to require a little bit more consideration. Saying that, while I'm thinking about that, one thing I can now move on to is I now know how many photographs I'm going to have. I know they're all going to be landscape orientation. It's time to design and purchase a frame to put these photographs in. Okay, let's talk about frame design. So this is my final frame design, and I've had to go through a number of different steps to get here. The first step was deciding how I'm going to print my images. Now I have a Canon Image Prograph Pro 300 printer, and I print all my photographs using Canon's professional print and layout software. It doesn't make any difference to the actual final output, it's just I prefer the interface. The other decision that I had to make was do I print the four photographs individually on separate bits of paper or as I ha actually have decided to do is use a single A3 plus bit of paper and put the four images on that and print that out as a, as a single sheet. Now the critical task for doing that is I've got to make sure that the cells for each of these individual photographs aligns exactly with the holes that are going to be in the mount for each of the four photographs. So I've got to place these cells manually, but I've got to do it precisely. How do I do the precision bit? Well, the precision bit is done in Photoshop. Now the photographs in here, I just set there. For example, the critical bit is actually these blue lines, and these are going to show me the measurements on the page that will help me determine exactly where these cells go. So why don't we start at this step? Let me talk you through how I get to this particular stage. So let's create a new document. My paper size for A3 plus is 485 by 330. The PPI does not matter because I'm not actually gonna print this page. This is only for creating measurements. I'll take you through some of the measurements. It's quite a time consuming process to do accurately, um, but you only have to do it once. Um, so I'll show you how to do some of the first cells. The first thing I do is going to draw the middle points. They're easy to do because Photoshop will snap those automatically to the middle. The next thing I know is I want to have a 10 millimeter border around. So I'm going to drag, these are what you call, if you go to view and you go to show guides, so these, are, these blue lines are just guides, but they do allow you to have precisely place them. So I'm going to zoom in. Sometimes you have to zoom in to get them precise, uh, placed precisely. So if I drag this one down, so 10 millimeters is a centimeter. So if I was going through the other thing, I'd do the, the bottom one there and the right one, but we'll just stick to here at the moment. Now I know that the middle of the mount, I want that border to be 30 millimeters. So if I bring up my calculator, I have a page with the 485 millimeters. If I divide that by two, that gives me the center point 242.5 millimeters, which is exactly where this line here is. So this is going to be 30 millimetres, it's 15 millimetres to the right, 15 millimetres to the left. So if I take away 15 millimetres, I know I need a guideline down here at 227.5. I've got back to my calculator and add 30 millimetres. I know I need another one at 257.5. Like that. I know my page height is 330 millimetres, if I divide, sorry, divide that by two. I'm going to do the same type of calculation. So I'm going to take away 15, that's 150. So now that I've got that guideline drawn in AC, I've got the first cell here. 
Now that I've got that one in, if I add 30, that'll be 180. It's the next one. There's my line at 180. So you can see here, I've got my first cell. I've got my 30 millimeter border here, my 30 millimeter border here. And then really to do the other ones, it's just a matter of repeating the exercise uh, and then that should all be done. I'll switch back to the final document. And here is my completed template with all the guidelines for all the different cells. Now, just to show what the pictures look like, I have imported these photographs into the as layers. As I said, I'm not actually printing this page. It's purely to give me an idea, well, an exact measurement of where the, the different uh, holes in the mount should be. And the, one of the key measurements I'm looking for here is once a, these pictures are in these cells that I've created, how big they are. I can do that. I can select, for example, somewhere up here. I can see it's, it's basically 21 centimeters by 14 centimeters. So this will be the same for all four cells. So now I know how big the cells are. I know exactly where they're going to be in terms of in relation to the rest of the page because I've got all these guidelines that I can check all the measurements for. I've now got all the measurements that I need to help me set out these cells in the printing software. Okay, here we are back in Canon's professional print and layout software. I've gone in and I've changed the layout mode to be multiple images and I've added in four cells. Now each cell is 140 millimeters by 210 millimeters. I knew that because that's what we worked out in Photoshop and I've applied that to all four cells. And then what I've got to do for each individual cell is place it appropriately on the page. And I do this by setting its uh, slot position here in relation to the top and the left hand side and that's where I go back to all those guidelines and I can work out well this one is going to be 10 millimeters from the top 17 and a half uh, sorry millimeters from the left this one will be whatever calculation I did that so that would actually be half 430 plus 15 that's where that one would sit so yeah 257.5 which is what we drew that guideline for and you just go over that and you repeat that and then they should all sit exactly as they were when you laid them out in the Photoshop page. So I now know that when I print this page, all these photographs will sit exactly where I expect them to sit based on the measurements that I've determined. Now I'm going to take these measurements now and feed that into how I design my frame. So here's my final frame design again. Let me go back to the beginning of this process and I'll take you through some of the steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell the designer software how many pictures I want in my multi-frame. Now I'm buying my frames from a company called Picture Frames Express and they have this custom frame designer software that allows you to do all sorts of clever stuff and design your frame however which way you want it. So what I will say about this process is there's no right or wrong way to, to do this in terms of designing your frame, you know, colours, mount size, how big the holes are. It's all entirely up to yourself. I would say that my frame is going to, obviously going to be four pictures and it's going to be two across by two down. So that's what I've entered here. So we'll go to enter picture sizes. Now, we know from all the previous steps that each of these photographs is going to be 210 millimeters by 140 millimeters. So you may be wondering why have I put 217 by 148. This is because this particular bit of designer software will reduce the mount size by eight millimeters. So it makes it easier that if you've got a picture that is um, printed all the way to the edges that's going to be much easier to mount. Now I've already taken that into account. I essentially add that eight millimeters back in so that when it reduces the whole size it as still matches the exact cell size of that I'm going to print my pictures off. A little bit of a quirky thing in the software that, that I know about but that just happens to be the way it works. Click an update and it's obviously I want to apply this to all four cell sizes here or picture sizes. Obviously you can, if you wanted to, you can have different cell sizes if you've got different size pictures that you want to sit in your frame. And you can click on these little photograph icons here and you can upload the pictures to get a visual representation of what that looks like. They don't actually print the pictures, but it just helps you visualize what your frame is going to look like. Then I select the actual color of the wood. Why well, I'm going for wood and I'm going for black. So I've got this J90 here, which is a 30 millimeters around the side. I want a single mount square style. They've got a number of different styles here you could choose if you wanted to. And I'm going to apply that to all the same. You can have some of them round if you wanted to, but obviously I want a uniform setup. So all mine are going to be square. So the widths here are 40 millimeters around the outside big pit of the mount. And as I've already calculated, 30 millimeters in the middle here. I want my mount color to be white. 
and then that's my final frame design done. So if I look at the detail of the mount square here, you can see it's 209 millimeters by 140 millimeters, which is actually just a fraction smaller than the actual uh, cell size that I determined. This is because I just want to give myself a little bit of wiggle room just in case um, I need to I make some fine adjustments. I always make things a little bit about a millimetre smaller than they need to be. Got all my borders here. It tells me what the size of the frame is going to be. So when I print that page out, that should all align exactly. I know exactly what how big these holes are. They match what size each cell printed is going to be. And I've got this 30 millimetre border here in the middle. So it should all line exactly. So all I need to do now is place my order. Every frame needs some photographs. So what I'm going to do next is print these photographs off. Now I've completed all the editing that I wanted to do. Um, I've got them all looking reasonably consistent in terms of, of their layout. So I'm happy and ready to go. So I'm going to select the images. I'm going to open up the Canon software. Okay, I've got my four images all loaded up here. I've got these loaded into my custom page layout that I set up earlier. So I know all these slot sizes and the borders are all exactly right. Now I've changed the order of the pictures or decided on an order of pictures. Now I've decided which order I want to have these photographs in. So I'm just gonna take these cells out and redo them the way I would like to do them. I've added them all in. So the way I wanted to do, I wanted to start with summer, autumn, winter, spring. And the reason I've done it that way, again, purely for personal choice, is that I'd like to, ha didn't want to have spring and summer, which are both green. I didn't want them having them in side by side cells. So I thought it told a better story as it flowed through as it went from the greens to the yellows, to the bare, back to the greens. I'm gonna select my paper type and the paper that I have selected today is going to be the Photospeed Platinum Cotton 305. It's A3 plus. I'm going to set the print quality to highest. I don't need to change anything else because I've got this layout all saved. It's really just going to hit the print button and watch the magic happen. It's great to have finally made a print. Normally I don't have to wait this long. I've got a single photograph, I've taken out in the shoot, I process it, I come back, I print it out, I've got something to hold in my hands, but I've had to wait a year to get this far. So I have got the print and I have put it into its mount board like that, but hold that back like that. And I think it looks great. I'm really happy with the result. I'm glad I spent a lot of time working out all the measurements because that print fits into that mat board and all those cutouts exactly it's exactly right so i'm really happy that that's all worked out so the next step really the final step we're almost finished is to get that mat board into the frame and find a spot for it on the wall there it is hanging on my wall really happy with the result it's filling in the gaps in the wall as i build up my gallery of photographs i just this is why i print because they just photographs just look so much better when they're on display. And I know this particular set of photographs taken a little while to get here. I've been working on this for a year and I managed to salvage it thanks to finding that photograph of spring. But ultimately, a great project and a great way to finish it. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have watched the entirety of it, thank you for sticking with it. I know it's a bit of a long one, but you know, these things take a little bit of effort and people often ask me questions how I do stuff. So it's always good to share as much information as I can. But if you have embarked on a photography project, why don't you let me know about it in the comments below, especially if it results in you doing some printing like this. And also I'd be really interested to know how you would have tackled that challenge with that spring image that I had. Would you have, for example, used the, the photograph? Would you have waited 
another year, waiting until spring again before capturing it, or ditched the whole lot, let me know how you would have handled it in the comments below. I've got a whole playlist full of videos about printing, including how I printed one of the images there on my gallery. I'll pop that up in the corner of the screen. So if you've got an extra few minutes, why not watch one of those videos as well? But if you have enjoyed this video, and I really do hope you have, please do hit that like button. And like I say, leave me a comment. I do try and read and reply to everyone's comments. And of course, if you want to see more videos like me, whether I'm out in location or here doing some printing, why not hit that subscribe button? And remember to click on the little bell icon as well, so you get an alert when I post up a new video. But that's about it for me for this video. I'll see you again soon.